Hello, my name is Richard McCallum. I'm going to read my story, Real Women Hunt Moose, a story that was published in the High Desert Anthology Survival in a Pandemic 2020. Here's my story. I flee COVID-infected New York City and shelter in an upper main backwards cabin, determined to isolate and self-survive. As an ex-Army Special Forces female, I am confident in my abilities to, provi to provide for myself. My hunt begins in the state of Maine, permitting me to kill. A hunting license for a moose, please? I ask the outdoor supply store guy as he rigs up my purchases of camping equipment. The store clerk, clerk looks like a good old boy from the backwoods, missing a few teeth and chaw and tobacco his remaining choppers and fingernails gleam yellow from smoking, and he smells like a brewery. His face mask hangs from one ear. Where do I find a moose? I ask the man. Ah, he moans, and with my help bags my purchases. The most important thing about hunting for a moose, he spits into a spittoon, and I'm distracted by thoughts a viral contagion. I await the moose hunting guide's words of wisdom, but apparently he wants me to restate the question. What's the most important thing about hunting for a moose? I say and indicate I would like to, him to cover his mouth and his nose with his mask. The weather drunk adjusts his mask and answers, lies in knowing at least one critter Loons in the area where he's used to go on hunting. And he pauses and leans in close. I smell booze and thoughts about the effectiveness of his mask upsets me. He blows over me as he whispers, bull moose lure. His slimy eyes enlarge to express how vital this top secret formula could be to my success. The cellar of bull moose attractive aromas floats the exler under my scent glands. It smells like cheap per perfume. He lets out a moose call, sounding like a buzzsaw. How many bottles will I need? You only got one moose permit, so I reckon you don't need too many bottles. On the other hand, it may take you quite a few times in different places before you're at a place where there's a moose lurking. Uh, like I said earlier, don't go hunting for a moose, whereas there ain't no moose to hunt. My lips snarl under the mask. I agree to purchase, I agree to the purchase of three six ounce bottles of moose, moose enticement at a hundred bucks a pop. A lot to pay, say I. He shrugs and responds, collecting fresh female moose urine in heat takes a special talent. I can imagine. I pay hundreds of dollars for all the supplies and the clerk throws in a little Swiss army knife, the ones with the little medical cross on them as a thank you gift. He says, folks often find them a needful thing. I construct a hunting lair upon some tree branches overlooking a river. I pour a steady stream of the lure mix into the current. At the rate I estimate a female moose might relieve herself and the bucket nears empty. Jaws, the shark, attacks, or so it appears. A monster moose with trophy antlers breaches out of the deep. The spines, his spines jam the entanglement of branches supporting my lair. The beast curls his lips and bellows in ecstasy. The attractive work. Only problem, no female moose. His pikes entwine my hunting outfit and my body snares on top of the moose's head. Unbelievable. By now the stud knows he did not capture the object of his desire. Floundering in the deep water, and struggling to keep his nose and mouth above water, 
The creature cannot flick me off. A scream, a prayer. Finally, the brute smashes into a log jam, which shifts, which shifts with the impact and traps him. He panics and tosses his head from side to side. Thrown onto a log, one of my feet gets pinned under his antlers. The animal drowns, but the entanglement keeps his eyes above the waterline. Night falls, chilled. I feel the spirit of the departed, haunted. The vacant eyes stare at me. I reflect on my role in the death. This great spirit of the deep forest, vibrant, full of life energy, who only sought to procreate, now will reign no more. My primal human instinct for survival ended his life. My body will likely be found stripped of flesh on this log someday. Sleepless. Thoughts of other people trapped in life or death situations come to mind. One man cut off his hand to free himself. A search in my pockets for anything useful to slice off my foot uncovers the one thing not paid for, the Swiss army knife. Needful thing, I quote the wise man who gave me the gift. As the sun warms, I doze on and off, but awake as the mosquitoes and flies target my exposed parts like a tortured soul left for their demonic pleasure. Late morning, I decide to push as hard as possible to move the logs and gain access to my foot. Instead, to my amazement, at that moment, the timbers spin apart and the whole tangle comes undone. I cling to my log as it flows downstream. My glance back reveals the moose's head his glazed, motionless eyes beholding me, sinking under the bu bubbling foam. A spiritual connection forged. I know this magnificent creature of God forgives me and will protect me. I shoot out of a series of rapids. My log targets a woman in a canoe dead ahead. We collide and spill into the water. I struggle to discard my protective hunting outfit as it now fills with water. Stripped down to my bra and panties, I strive to help her as she struggles to help me. Together we make it to the shore and collapse. My attempt to apologize and her feigned anger both end when we burst out laughing. We shiver, risking contamination. The lady snuggles close. She gives me a needful thing, human touch. <laughs>